Časem, časem, Monday. Časem, časem, Monday. Časem, časem, Monday. Emily, we're talking about our taste buds now. And of course, the misconception that you actually pointed out very clearly while you were speaking in your 10 minutes. Um, a lot of people, and also David, you know, it's, think that it's a sacrifice. You're sacrificing what is delicious for something that isn't necessarily delicious. If you're talking about greens, the first thing that comes to your mind is a leafy green with no oil, but crunchy, okay, but where's the taste? Yeah, it isn't salty. Uh, oily, the conversation that we had earlier, you know, and Emily, you were saying how you, it is really unhealthy substitutes when you have a vegetarian diet that actually um, adds to the host of diseases that actually uh, you suffer after becoming vegetarian. In Bhutan, that unhealthy substitute is cheese. You put cheese in everything, cheese and butter. Um, and also another, I'd like to slowly open up Bhutan to the two of you and the difficulties that a vegetarian faces in the country. For instance, if I were to conceive if I were to become pregnant, um, everybody would want me to eat meat after I give birth because they say, how do I provide nourishment to my child? I've seen that happen to a lot of vegetarian women who are forced to become non-vegetarian after they deliver or as they progress towards delivery. So this obviously is a misconception based on what you shared. So how do you make this, how do you make a plant-based diet consumable? Yeah. To, and tasty, because I'm sure you, you had a meat, you were saying you had a meat-based diet. So then the transition for you really must not have been so simple or very easy. Of course, in the UK, in the West, and in Hong Kong also now, because it's a trend, you were saying it's a growing trend. It's easy to access what is healthy food. But in Bhutan, it's expensive to be a vegetarian. Um, it's so difficult, like Kempo's nodding in agreement. Uh, it's been very expensive for me to be a vegetarian here. Yeah. And perhaps for Kempo during the Sagha, that was like Kempo. <laughs> but I'm just joking. Uh, so if you could react, uh, because I'm giving you what, is, what it's like to be a vegetarian in Bhutan, and then if you could give us some of your experience, share some of your experience as well. Surprisingly, actually, there is a lot of things you can do with vegetables. Um, I actually went completely raw for six months, and I lived on a completely raw food diet of just fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds. And you can actually make just about everything with a plant-based diet. They substitute, um, instead of cheese, they use nuts and they you can make nut cheeses. And the same with milks. Instead of milk, they used to make nut milks, almond milks, rice milks. A lot of people are now consuming soy milk as well. Um, and they'd make, with, with spinach and kale and it, it's the flavoring and stuff you put on it, but it's, I think also th the whole thing with a lot of the reasons why people, when they get pregnant, then start going back to eating meat or eggs and stuff again, is due to the fact of the foods that they're consuming. Um, because you do, can't, you can become very deficient, because as soon as you go vegetarian, things like calcium and iron and B vitamins can be difficult to obtain if you're not eating the right kinds of foods. So you have to be cautious of knowing what to eat and consuming the enough nutrients to satisfy your body's needs. The dominant narrative at the moment is really that you can't really substitute a meat-based diet. I mean, of course, for people like yourself yeah. uh, who follow very, um, who have embraced this lifestyle um, and a healthier lifestyle, really. But it takes a lot of convincing because we are generations of people who've been educated in schools that say that without meat, we are experiencing deficiency. And even the whole discourse of plant-based diet is really met with very stiff resistance from the medical societies themselves. I think... A lot of the problem is that is our conditioning and the fact that the meat and dairy industries are so powerful nowadays that they control what we hear and the information we find out and what we're told that they don't want a lot of the people to realize that you can actually be a lot healthier on vegetables and fruit because and essentially that then puts them out of business. So. I think it's about r spending a bit of time researching yourselves and um, finding new answers that aren't what we're s essentially told all the time by the government and by people around us. 
Steve, would you like to add something? Um, yeah, I want to add to this point is that um, Emily just hit on a very important aspect, which is um, what are we up against? Um, when we talk about, you know, again, humane, moral, nutrition, or environment, the truth is all the facts are there. I mean, it's absolutely okay uh, to be vegetarian, and actually you're doing yourself and the planet a lot of good, uh, and of course a lot of beings. But the real battlefield, of course I mentioned about taste bud, but the other real battlefield, believe it or not, is actually marketing. Mm -hmm. It's actually marketing, because um, I think in Bhutan this aspect may actually be less because relative to other countries in the world, I mean, this is r less of, you, you don't see fast food chains here, mm -hmm. Um, I don't see McDonald's. But you know. we have acquired a taste for it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody <laughs> wants a McDonald's burger and a KFC flown in if they can help it. You know, I, I, I want to tell you that it's good that you don't have those in here. <laughs> um, the truth is when they call it a happy meal, the processing behind it is not happy at all. Okay, if you see the process that the food go through before reaching your table, you won't be happy at all. Um, Jamie Oliver actually did a show or did a test to show people what exactly are the meats behind, let's say, a burger. And, you know, it, it's tough to believe is that actually, according to that whole test is that the meats that is put in a burger patty is so lousy, it's so awful level, it's like the worst type of meat that well, I, I'm quoting Jamie Oliver, okay, is that actually even dogs will not eat those meat. <laughs> it's not even appropriate for dogs. But what companies do is that they would put in different chemicals to make the food look and taste good. Basically, the taste is a, for, is a fake taste. It's tricking our taste bud. It's a complete trick. Now, after putting chemicals to make it look good, after putting chemis chemicals to trick your taste bud, last but not least is they market it crazy. They market it like crazy. They throw in millions and millions and millions of dollars to tell you that this is good for you, when it actually is not. And so, believe it or not, after talking about moral, environment, nutrition, the real battlefield is marketing. Because in today's world, people are too lazy. Uh, most people are too lazy. I mean, if they care, if they are mindful enough about themselves and about the environment, then they would think that they should choose a vegetarian diet. But most people are too lazy to think about that. So they just see whatever advertising billboard tell them, whatever commercial tell them, they would believe. But the truth is, a lot of those are false information. So I guess when we talk about a healthy campaign, a green campaign, um, one aspect that we also should pay attention to is the marketing aspect. It's the marketing aspect. Um, and um, for us in Hong Kong, I must say that um, we actually won, uh, by the way, I, I have to share this, um, is that um, last year, 2013 Green Monday in Hong Kong, out of the many awards that we won, there was one award that is completely unexpected. But it's, it, it, it is a tribute to the effort that we put in. Um, it's that besides you know, local heroes, be, be, besides pioneers, things like that, there's one award which is the biggest marketing award in Hong Kong. Okay? That award, the contestants are Disney, McDonald's, okay? uh, s you know, Apple, for example. Those are the contestants global superpowers, okay? Um, we actually, with no budget, we are a campaign, well, very, very, very tiny budget, okay? Close to zero, okay? But through smart marketing, okay? We actually came up to one, number three, we, we won bronze award, we beat Disney, <laughs> and we beat McDonald's, <laughs> despite the fact that our budget is like this. Um, and then afterwards, when they interview us, you know, and, and we won the best small budget award too. And when afterwards, when we received the, 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 the trophy and they interview, you know, why Green Monday put so much effort on marketing? And I say, it's because, you know what, believe it or not, after all these education, if you talk to laymen, if you talk to lay people, um, actually, marketing is a very key thing that they, it's the key battlefield. And if you don't win that war, 
it's hard to convert people's behavior. Thank you, David. Congratulations, by the way, to Green Monday. <laughs> Uh, I've received some questions via Twitter. Uh, the mic will be going around, I think. If you all have questions, you all can prepare yourself. If you're not too comfortable standing and asking the questions, you're most welcome to send them in to me via Twitter at Namgizam. The question comes from Sring Doji, he's seated in the audience. Recommend a balanced natural diet that Bhutanese vegetarians, he's also vegetarian, um, can practice given our excessive intake of rice, potatoes, chilies, and cheese. So something natural that, and Bhutanese tend to be lazy and we like things quick again. Unless it's meat, we don't take a lot of time for vegetables. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever seen the food triangle pyramid, which basically constructs what foods we should be eating and the amount. But for a vegetarian diet, the bottom of the pyramid, which would be the most amount of something we should consume, would be fruits and vegetables would be at the bottom followed by then grains, which would be where rice would come in or buckwheat, I think you grow here, and other grains. And then on top of that would be then maybe dairy or cheese and nuts, seeds. And then the last thing at the top of the triangle, which would be the, sm the less amount of something we should consume would be then the oils and maybe snacks like chocolate or things people love um, but for a Bhutanese diet I personally would recommend as a as a meal um, making obviously f either fruits or vegetables the main pro proportion of your meal followed by then rice instead of having rice as the predominant thing on your plate um, rice is obviously great um, but fruits and vegetables are where essentially we're getting most of well, a lot of the nutrients and things we need to have energy and um, fill our cells with all the nutrients and things we need. Um, I don't know if it's all over Bhutan, but personally, I've where I've been and eaten, not many people seem to consume a lot of fruit. I don't know if that's common all over the country. Um, but fruit is actually an excellent source of nutrients and it's where we, you can receive most of the nutrients we need to survive actually a lot of people now all over the world are actually living on a f fruit diet not that I recommend this at all but people are now consuming totally fruit-based diets and t becoming fruitarians essentially and they're thriving on it so I would recommend eating consuming a lot more fruit um, maybe for breakfast instead of rice and then having for lunch and dinner your rice and vegetables and nuts, seeds, some oils. And the other thing I've also noticed with the Bhutanese diet is the vegetables, um, what I've personally received, the vegetables seem to be very oily. Um, and as soon as you cook something a lot and cover it in oil, it actually destroys a lot of the nutrients and goodness in the food. So maybe cutting back on some of the oil and the cooking time of some of the vegetables. But yeah. Thank you. I, I think that's quite helpful for vegetarians. We're taking questions from the floor. If there's any of you, there's one, one gentleman there. If you could introduce yourself and then ask your question. Lad. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Shirup. Uh, I'm a civil servant. Uh, my question is pertaining to uh, slaughter slaughterhouse. Uh, we don't have formal sla slaughterhouse in Bhutan, but uh, we have you know small pockets of you know slaughterings happening here and there. But uh, my question is, um, there are some school of thought who says uh, uh, you know we should not have slaughterhouse in the in the country, uh, and we have others who says who say uh, we should have because we're consuming meat anyway. Uh, and uh, at least we can say from being hypocrite. Um, um, and uh, some, uh, some also say, you know, that, uh, you know, seeing just meat on the plate and not seeing uh, animals being slaughtered is distancing yourself. There's disconnect between how meat is made. And, uh, and then those who say, you know, we should not uh, have a uh, slaughterhouse in the country say that uh, it's becoming, uh, there's a fear, uh, there's a fear of, uh, uh, animal slaughtering becoming acceptable 
and uh, you know that, that there's a, f uh, a fear of that. Now, um, my question to you know any of you can answer this: uh, What is your view? Whether you know uh, we should uh, you know uh, have slaughterhouse, you know, or we shouldn't have slaughterhouse? Thank you. Well, I would rather say not to have a slaughterhouse because. Okay. Uh, if you, uh, let me just quote uh, from Buddha's uh, Parinavra, Parinirvana Sutra where Buddha said, wherever a meat eater lies, sits or walks, other sentient being becomes fearful upon smelling, smelling him. Blessed son, just as when a man eats garlic, others will keep away because of his bad smell. Likewise, when an animal smells a meat eater, they fear death. So looking at that and going by that judgment, I think it's better not to have a slaughterhouse. Johnson Johnson Monday 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 Johnson Johnson Monday